Hey guys, uh, we're gonna do basic uh, mold making and uh, we're gonna start with these, uh, I wanna say gazelle horns that I've had. And this piece obviously has a lot of texture and it's very organic. So first you decide, you know, we're gonna do the two piece mold. And step one would be basically doing your clay work. So I've laid some foundation clay take the piece as you can see laying the piece in the clay and I'm gonna basically little by little add bits of clay to create the barrier between the two mold halves you have to remember to use a non sulfur clay because Sulfur tends to react with uh, most silicones. Because it is not a perfectly straight shape, I'm deliberately sculpting the mold or building my clay to follow the contour of the horn itself as it curves upward the clay will curve to follow the natural lines as you can see here there's a large hole in the end of the horn so we're gonna have to uh, fill this so that the rubber doesn't pour inside so we're just basically gonna create a barrier for this and work it in. Now right now I'm just doing the rough the rough work. At this stage it doesn't have to be pretty. Semi roughed in. Spin this around. Now we're gonna cap off. The end of this one. Make sure that the clay is very snug against your piece because you do not want the piece shifting. As your uh, laying up your silicone. You also want to allow Depending on the size of your mold, you want to allow a one to two inch band all the way around to create a flange so your mold halves will meet. Basically this first half. Okay, now that we've uh, 
laid our groundwork and clayed up our two pieces, you can see the clay follows the contours of the horns. I built a barrier on the ends filling the hole. You always wanna make sure that your clay is very thoroughly pushed into your pieces so that there are no gaps. And I've allowed, you know, a one, one and a half inch band of clay all the way around to give me a sufficient flange when the mold halves meet. The next step would be to cut in where you want the molds to meet because this pushed in clay is too irregular. You want, you want the mold halves to meet as cleanly as possible. So now you take a, a standard um, dental tool that can be found online in most hobby stores, even Harbor Freight. And you take your tool and you come in and you wanna cut as cleanly as you can, trim the clay away as close to the piece so that you get a very sharp, precise edge. And then you can take it and smooth it out. And as you can see, this is as very cleanly cut and trimmed. And now I will work my way around to this piece. You want to remove the clay as you go so it doesn't interfere. removing any excess clay as you go along. You can use the tool to smooth out any lumpy areas. Make sure there's no Random debris, excess clay on your piece. All right, spin this around so I can trim the other side. Personally, I find this a very relaxing exercise. Depending on what your original piece is, you wanna be careful how much pressure you apply because you could damage the original by scratching it since this is, um, an organic animal horn, it's pretty hard material and I can apply as much pressure as I want and not damage the bone or horn. And if you accidentally take off too much material, you can always scoop a little bit of clay, fill it back in, and do it again. As you can see, the clay cuts very easily. And there we have the 
two halves of this. Now we're gonna move on to this end. And this is gonna be a little bit of a challenge. We're gonna make sure that because it's in a regular edge. I'm not concerned about this being very pretty because at some point, once you have your resin casting, this piece will be cut and trimmed. Reasonably comfortable with that end. Turn this end and see. Okay, at this point, I have the pieces clayed, cleaned, any excess material has been removed. The next step would be making registration marks for the silicone, which are called keys. Here is an example. Is we're going to make indentations in the clay so that when you do your upper mold and you remove it, you have these registration pins or keys so that when you do your mold on the opposite side, it has the corresponding keys and your mole halves meet and lock together. So, you can use almost anything to make a key. I'm taking an ordinary paintbrush that has a pretty reasonably rounded handle without getting very close to the piece. Remember, I have a full inch and a quarter of width all the way around. This is why we're creating a wide flange. And you can at least one quarter to a half an inch away from your piece, you can begin to make shallow indentations you can add as many as you like they just they don't have to be no deeper than a quarter of an inch it's just so when your mold halves come together they won't slip and it keeps your, your casting as clean as possible. And again, if you make a, make a hole too big or too deep, you can just take a little bit of clay, fill it back in, being careful not to pull the clay away from the side and just continue 
making your registration keys. Okay, so now that we've gone all the way around and created all our registration marks and we've looked at the piece thoroughly to make sure that there are no gaps in the clay between the piece and the clay and the pieces are relatively stable the next step would be to apply mold release I personally prefer man 200 and um, this can be purchased from Reynolds Whatever, yeah, we'll do with that. I will post links in the end of the video. So, of course, you want to use in a well ventilated area. And you want to, of course, mix it and spray very lightly, making sure you get it. Thoroughly. You want to let this dry for a few minutes and then apply a second coat and then on to mixing our silicone. Okay, now we're going to mix the silicone and we're going to do the first layer and we're going to start with the smooth on rebound 25 silicone so always have your clean cups mixing cup utensils stir stick i prefer a little flat piece of metal stock but anyway You want to always uh, pre-mix your materials, but these have been pre-mixed. like about these cups is you can see through the sides and it makes it very easy to pour equal parts. Take my mixing cup.
my halves together. I'm going to go ahead and mix this up. Making sure that I thoroughly scrape the sides, which is why I love using clear cups, because you can actually see part A and part B thoroughly that they're mixing. Just when you think you have it mixed, mix it some more. deliberately mixed a very, very small amount because I only want a very thin coat. cream stick and very gently make sure I get this into all the little spaces you don't want to scrape the piece you just want to let this material move at its own pace make sure you don't trap any air bubbles in the keys
so it's covered. Now we're gonna move over here, making sure that we puncture any little air bubbles that are trapped. surface of the horn covered also. got time to work with your silicone because it doesn't it doesn't set up right away but you will notice within a few minutes it will begin to gel and become a little stiffer harder to work with silicone here and there. Remember, this is just the first coat, very thin coat. This is just to make sure that there are no air bubbles trapped on your piece. see any air bubbles just feel free you can go ahead and start popping them another small trick if you have an air compressor, not everyone does, but you can take an air blower and gently gently blow on the beast and it will pop any air bubbles. Now she's starting to get a little bit thick. She's starting to gel up. So you can take this opportunity if you see any thin spots to apply it. Now remember, we're going to be applying a second coat. So again, this is just, just to make sure that you've got it covered. And 
that's about it. She's not uh, allowing me for the material. It's starting to get too thick and not allowing me to manipulate it too much anymore. I feel confident that I've got every surface covered. And, and there you go. That's it for the first coat of rubber.